Howdy folks, we are here today with Peter Giordano and Peter is the CEO of the Arcanum and I, 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 oh my gosh, <laughs> the guy is going through the Arcanum as an apprentice and he is coming back with ideas and he's feeding them right into the Arcanum and just making this the best possible place to learn. Hi Peter. Hi. <laughs> Great introduction, thank you. It's <laughs> Very flattering. Well, I think you're awesome, Peter. <laughs> Sweet of you. That's nice. No, I'm just, I'm just regular guy. I mean, that I, we were talking right before the hangout, and I have goals that I want to achieve. What are those goals? I want to create some things. Well, you know, I got to tell you the um, in level one in the in the group, you said I need you guys to write out what you want to do. Where do you want to take things? And you know, it was like a moment where I had to say, well, wait a second, what have I been doing, where do, and what are the things that are interesting to me, mm -hmm. and then what is the source of all that? And the short answer is, um, you know, I grew up loving video games and sci-fi and Dungeons and Dragons and all that kind of stuff, and I love that. And then on the other side, if you look at my work, like stuff I publish, it's most, it's like 90% landscape. You know, and then there's some portraits here and there, but and the landscape part comes from I just really like being outside. I like going out for a hike. I like exploring. I like being up early outside and late outside. Right. And so I take a lot of landscape. And so what I started to realize was that what I want to do and where I want to go, what I'm attracted to when I look at art is a lot of the composites and creating something new from parts and starting to think of these things in three dimensions, right, as layers that come together. And for me, it's this mashup of landscape and some of the sci-fi fantasy stuff. And so um, I was just seeing, there, I just saw today, I think it was on, I don't know, like Flipboard or something, and there are all these super cool Star Wars posters where there's a couple of characters there and this, you know, sci-fi landscape, you know, yeah. and I'm like, okay, I want to create that. And I don't, I don't know what I'm going to use it for yet, but I just, I have that drive that I want to create more things like that. Right. Um, a great, another, I'll tell you just real briefly, maybe we can add it to the list here or something. Um, there was a photo taken of Mitre Curtis in New Zealand, and then Julio Shorio, who's a new master, started yesterday. Uh -huh. He did a composite, and he put a, a Star Wars uh, ATAT walker, like on the snow, and it's great. He, it, 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 that, it's like, okay, I want to know how to do that. Like some of it's fun and amusing, but I want to make them a little more surreal. Like Robin, that's one of the reasons I was delighted to be in your cohort because I was really attracted to you know, some of your surreal and concept images that merged landscape with some other whimsical objects. And I just, I love that. I just, I want to be able to create more of those. And I get blocked because I do the landscape, but I don't, like, I just, I, I get blocked on, well, what's my next thing? What element should I add? Where's the whimsy coming from, you know? Where's your play? Yeah. Yeah. So anyway, sorry, it's probably longer than you wanted to hear, but... No, 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 that's fine. It's great because, you know, your enthusiasm is so wonderful. <laughs> and you really do seem to have a very, very clear target, which is is always a good thing to have. So uh, just a quick tip on that. Yes. Start, start now. When you're out shooting and um, whenever you see something that you just think is just interesting for just as a singular element... Like it may not make this fabulous picture to you know to post into your po portfolio or, or whatever, but it's just very interesting. Uh, it's a cool mountain. It's a gargoyle on the side of a building. It's texture. It's uh, all of these different things. Um, just snap them and start creating a library for yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because uh, I mean I've seen a lot of people. You know you can you can do stock. I mean, a lot of people do stock. Um, it's always been my thing to shoot. The, the stuff that I composite with is what I've shot, you know? So um, just start creating a library for yourself, and every time you, you grab them off the card, just grab those that you know are specifically for ideas, and you throw them into a, a folder. This is just your, your fodder folder. You know? yeah, that's a good one, actually. That's really good. Yeah, and then what it what it does? See, I a lot of the times when I I don't know if you saw the one that I posted on my stream uh, 
uh, just today, which was the elephants. Uh, these two elephants, and every single one of those shots were from uh, times that I've been at the zoo. Oh, okay. And I and I've just made this composite like these elephants now are about ready to battle on this bridge. Oh, I have to look at that. I saw the balloons one from a day or two ago. Yeah. Yeah, that, yeah I love that one. Yeah. Yeah, and the thing is, the thing is, is what happens is I I I basically had a, a six image stitch of the bridge area with um the bamboo on the side, the bamboo greenery, and I looked at it and I went, well, okay, it's kind of interesting, but it's empty. It doesn't, okay, so that's where my mind starts ticking, and then I just start searching through folders. I see. And that's where, that starts well, generating cool. ideas. So you got the back base layer, and then you started looking through your other ideas, and then just started saying, okay, that might work in this environment. Not even that. I just, I, the, when I snap, when I'm out like in, a, in the city and I'm snapping buildings, I'm not necessarily snapping them with an idea that I'm going to composite it later. I mean, you can. Maybe you go, to, you go to a really cool castle, and you think, okay, I know what I want to do with this one immediately, but I don't always do that. Sometimes I just start snapping, and then I have all of these things available to me, and Usually when I do a composite, you should see me, I spend way more time searching through my hard drives, oh. searching for ideas of what would work there, what would work there, or what would work with what I have in my mind. And now how's that going to, you know, do I have that? Do I have that piece already? So you find over time, the more of these that you collect, the more you go, ah. I know exactly what needs to go in there. And you can create like separate folders, you know, in your fodder folder. That's architecture or animals or, you know, landscapey stuff. Like backgrounds, just great, just what, what would be a really good background, you know? Something that has, it does, it's not necessarily going to stand strong as a landscape, but there's something about the line or the values in it or, the, you know, just the colors in it that you want now to add something to it. Anyway, that's... That's just a quick tip on that. You know, I think I, I think I want to refine maybe my goal because I was thinking about how to make it more actionable and time oriented and so forth. And kind because of, I go by this idea of a smart goal kind of mm -hmm. thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I would say like if if we were to take the sphere zero and one, so through level twenty, mm -hmm. um, for me I would like to be able to get to a place where I've got a portfolio. Maybe this is bars too low, but of five images that are these little sci-fi fantasy landscape composites. Mm -hmm. that, so I guess that's my answer. I want to produce a portfolio of five to seven images from my foundation. That's fantastic. I love it. It's a fabulous goal. It's a fabulous goal. So we can, we can look at that in terms of what you'll be focusing on on in your level five. Okay, that's all. That gives me goosebumps when I hear that. And you're that's, that's like if I could if I could exit foundation with that, then I have this body of work that either carries me forward or I can just say, you know what, okay, I've got that out of my system. Maybe there's something else that I learned that I really like. Right. In the process of doing that. But right. I just, I need to start, anyway, you, I think we, we're on the same page, yeah. That's yeah, absolutely. Great. No, that's a fabulous goal and I love that you're setting a concrete goal for yourself because cool. you're going to be driven that way one yes. <laughs> because, because of who you are in terms of the in terms of the arcanum yeah. um, you're now setting an example for uh, one your fellow apprentices as well as you know every apprentice that's going through the arcanum system and will be going through the arcanum system that ends up watching this so I just I just thought of, thank you for that I just thought of though I have to say this I just thought of what will be the true test yeah. of five to seven images which yep. be, my wife says, print that and let's put it up. <laughs> like, when, oh, yeah, when I love it. Say, I love that. Let's print it and let's hang it. Then, I love it. You know, we've created the right balance, right? For yeah. well, at least at least for her, for here. So that would be nice. If I get one of those that she's able to hang, that'd be great. All right, cool. Fantastic. Okay, so just very quickly for anybody that's watching this critique. Uh, I want you guys to know, or want everyone out there to know that this is not staged. This is for Peter Giordano, and this is a genuine critique, and it's genuinely designed to help him realize his artistic goals. So I just want you to know I'm not going easy on him. We're not going to flip through these and say, okay, it's a done, it's a wrap. This is going to be a genuine critique, and I hope that um, Peter finds that he has some really fabulous ideas when he's done. <laughs>
Oh, I'm so excited. Yeah, let's yeah. do it. <laughs> All right. So I'm going to do screen share. Okay, great. Because I already have your images up in Photoshop as long as I can get it to come up here. And here we go. So I want you to tell me about each of your goals for each image as we go through these, Peter, all right? Yes. So tell me about this one. Well, so this one really was trying to capture this moment. Um, it's warm, and it was warm. It was probably 90 degrees, Cabo San Lucas. Um, you've got this refreshing point where you've got Sea of Cortez, Pacific Ocean meeting, and you've got these young young folks that are out there on their short surfboards skimming all over the place. And all of a sudden, like all this activity, calm, it all died down, and they rested. Mm -hmm. And they're waiting there for like the next set to come in, just patiently waiting. And you know, I just, in my mind, I'm like, oh my gosh, when there's so much activity, just two minutes or three minutes on the beach must seem like an eternity to them. Yeah. And so I wanted to capture that moment of them waiting patiently for extreme activity and the warmth and the, quite frankly, some of the, the drama of the cliffs and the sand and the ocean. And even looking at now, I just realized that there's kind of a, a, um, a, a, ba a balance and maybe even a juxtaposition of craggy, hard rock on the right and then the soft calm water on the left and um, uh, just actually stepping outside of myself to look at it as I see that now. But mm -hmm. that was, right moment, warmth, drama, understanding this eternity they're feeling with the sets. Understood. So tell me about what you did to process this image. Sure. Um, I, I, I think I took a couple exposures, um, but they turned out a little too dark. And so I had to rescue um, a little bit with the lighter one in some of the dark areas. Um, I think I just used uh, Photoshop, actually, in a layer to do that. And um, I did a couple of other things. Um, I just tried to paint a little bit of warmth into the sky. Um, I added the solar flare, the, the lens flare. That actually is not natural. Uh -huh. I put that in. I wanted to add a little bit of whimsy in there. Um, and, you know, I tried to recover the right detail on the right-hand side. Um, and, again, that flare is coming off of the, the sun. Um, that was a little bit, um, you know, created by me, I guess. Um, and that, that was really it. I did a little bit of cloning to just remove a few distractions. I think there was a stick here and there. and. Right. Um, there actually might have been some people actually like on the first right rock um, in that area uh -huh. that I might have removed. So, yeah, that's that's kind of that's that's kind of it, I think. Wonderful. So, firstly, I I absolutely love your concept here and your decision to to shoot this particular moment because I because I see these guys here and um, I do I feel that. Um, particularly in this fellow here, that yeah. sense of waiting for the next wave to come, you know, a real wave, a good one. Right, yeah. Yeah, so very well seen. I also very much love your addition of the lens flare here, and I'm going to uh, explain a little bit more to you about that as we go on with this particular image. Now, one of the things that uh, came up or that I've uh, given out to my apprentices in our last one of our last challenges has to do with main actors and supporting actors and the way I preface that is um, I don't know if you've ever seen uh, these these gardens that where people have all kinds of tchotchkes everywhere they have gnomes and they have cutesy pots and they have little signs and they have little you know figurines and 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 it goes on and what ends up happening is when you try to feature everything that you see you end up featuring nothing mm -hmm. so your main actor can get lost now the your your base image 
this composition is fantastic because really what we've got in this particular lineup is, is just essentially an arrow. It's a pointer that points straight to your, your, your main actor here, what you want to have as your main actor. The choice of the lens fare with, these high, with this high saturation and the reds, which really draw the eye, reds really draw the eye, are actually leading directly to your main actor, these, these fellows waiting. All right? So fantastic decision on that. One of the things that's happening is high values also draw the eye. And so this becomes a feature element and is actually distracting away from your guys here. And in fact, somewhere in the processing, I'm going to zoom in on this, and you can see the little halos very, very faintly around these guys, right? So in, somewhere in the processing, you've actually lost some of the light that could have really driven the eye right directly to these guys. Yeah. Okay? I mean, just to enhance your concept even more. So, yeah, our eyes are basically first attracted to the lightest light and the darkest dark in an image. So in bringing this light down, you've actually taken away that aspect of where you could have had the, the strongest con contrast and had this image just smack you in the face the minute you looked at it. Mm. So I'm going to do just um, a little... I'm not actually cropping your image, just so you know. Oh, sorry. But... Ah, uh, yeah, I see. Yeah. So now you can even go with... Uh, this is what I have here is the rule of thirds uh, grid. But there's, of course, all kinds of ways to compose. I do not ever slavishly stick people into rule of thirds, so please do not think that I'm doing that. All I've done is simply removed the most distracting factor, which was this area up here. And at this stage, you would just get rid of this. You would clone it out or heal it out, you know, a little content-aware, um, you know, take a selection and do that content-aware fill thing on that area. And now this becomes your main actor. And then everything supports it. And you don't lose one of these nice features, which is, you know, but this is a supporting actor. Mm -hmm, it's mm -hmm. showing context of where they're at. Right? Yes. So it's okay. Yes. It's okay to leave that in. All right? So that is all on this image. Really love a lot of your choices here with it. Very, very nice. And, what, do you, what do you think about the about how much foreground there is in the image? I love it. See, one of the things about a strong leading foreground, I mean, not all images have to have them, but they're nice to include in a landscape type image. When you want your viewer to just sort of enter it and not hit your main subject immediately. So you want sort of a patience and waiting here. You're not trying to force the viewer into, the, into this position. Right, right. So this allows them to enter. We, we relate to images that we're looking at physiologically. So anything that's, that's in the lower foreground, it, it's like feet walking. This is how we relate to it, and we'll enter in a nice, strong foreground images. Why? Why they're very nice to include in landscapes. So well, I like it. I like it very much. And the fact that you chose to take out any of the, you know, any of the crud that might be here that would would definitely be a distraction was an excellent decision. What do you think about just a real short question on um, reducing it down to one of the surfers? I thought about that, and then mm -hmm. I think my skill level was there at the time. This was about a year ago. I think it's I think it I think it would make it an extremely strong image. I can't um, actually go into let's go here. Hang on a second. Let me get rid of that. So if you if we, if we can picture this guy not here. Yes. You also have a very strong statement in that alone. Yeah. Right? That of course it's not the same image and you have the opportunity you have the opportunity to, um, to of course, reinvent your images and come back and reprocess as yeah. well, right? 
you're not you're not limited to any one idea. I've actually have uh, you know a few images that I've just said you know I'm going to do this one again and see what it looks like in black and white or see what it looks like in a different color and you know it's a lot of fun to do. That's what I love about this process is that you know I put this one together but now I'm I've got like energy and motivation I can see what result I want. Mm -hmm. and now I'm like I want to go do it. <laughs> Great. Yeah. Yeah, the more the more you know, the more you um, hone what you're doing, you know, and the more you can you can see that it's actually possible that you can actually do that and create what you see in your mind's eye. You'll that that energy will will just build. Cool. All right, cool. That's yeah. awesome. So it'll be great. All right, and on to the next one. Tell me about this image. Yeah, sure. So um, this one was really about this dramatic collision of colors. Mm -hmm. um, this is very, this is uh, New Zealand, so there's a few in here from New Zealand, and the water, if you've never been there, you, would, you wouldn't believe that the water was this color, but mm -hmm. it is, it is this crazy blue. Yeah. But at the same time, we had these reds and purples mm -hmm. popping up in the greens, and then I saw these striated rocks, and I wanted to highlight them, because I thought it was interesting, um, it's just interesting to have them on the on the left side there. Right. Um, and so that was it. It was really about capturing again just majesty of New Zealand in a collision of colors that I thought were really otherworldly. Fantastic. So tell me about your um, processing. What you what steps you took? Yep. So this this was HDR. I think I took three images and um, I may have done a 32-bit merge instead of using like photomatics or something like that. Mm -hmm. that. That allowed me just to work more around the tones, like the highlights and darks and so forth, to try to coax more out of the image. Right. And I, I want to say I used Nick Color Effects to start to manage some of the warmth and cool tones a little bit. Uh -huh. and, um, and I think the last part was some of the work on the right-hand side it was a little too dark for my taste. It kind of went too much to black. Mm -hmm. um, and I don't think there was enough detail. And I wanted there to be some. And so I think I, yeah, I know I did. I went in there and I might have used a layer mask to, and a tone, and a, and a curves adjustment layer to bring it up, but then mask it in. Uh, right. Bring it up a little bit. Do you, you know how to do luminosity masking? You know, I not at the time I did this. And it's something I've seen. And I've, I need to practice it. It's I, I know it's a very powerful tool. I haven't it's not in my tool belt. It's a tool that I see on the shelf. I know I need to use it. I don't know all of the times when I should use it, which I think is the big first step. And well, then I'm not practiced in using it at this point. I'm just gonna show it to you really, really quick. Sure. I'm holding down my command key. If if the person watching this on the PC, it's a, it's your control key. And you, I'm just gonna click on the RGB channel. And what's that do, what that's doing is it's loading in all of your whites. You're, you're basically making a mask out of all of your whites, so your whites are going to show through and the blacks won't. Now, if you want to just bring up the blacks, how do you do that? You just, I'm doing command I here, invert the mask. Now, anything that you do is going to be isolated to just, just where all these white areas now, that's just where the blacks are, are, are in the image. Got it. Yep, it, that makes sense. Is it, I mean, is that, is that real to you? Is it a little bit complex? I, I get it, I get it. It's, it's yeah. just, you've used the, um, the lightness as a way to create a selection, and then you've turned that into a mask, right? Yeah, exactly. By clicking down here, I just made it into its own little mask, and then I just inverted it. And then, how do you use that back in the image? Would you um, do you have to get out of your channels panel there, or how do well, you? I, once again, I'm just going to do the command click on it, so I'm selecting it. Ah. Okay. Yes. So I'm going to deselect it and show you that right down here, where the little where the little circle with the, made out of dots is, yep. it's exactly the same thing. You can see my little tooltip pop up there that says, hang on, come on, pop up, load channel as selection. So it's exactly the same thing as command clicking on it or control clicking on it. 
and now I've created it as a selection. And if you wanted to, you just here our little adjustments panel is. You can do curves. You can let's just like slap a, a, an exposure on it. <laughs> right, right. I'm actually you're seeing what you're seeing. The red is is just still being in the mask. So let me just shut that off for a second. And you'll just see as I work on this particular one. So I'm just going to bring the exposure up, and this is just in the blacks. And you watch as all the blacks are coming up. Now the thing that I, it's, it's just like going crazy on the sky here and that's, that's, not, that's not wonderful. But what you can do is then you just put this guy into a group. See the little folder down there? Yeah. Just put it into a group and mask the group. I've just put a mask on it. And you invert it and now you can just paint. Right. Any area that you think is a little bit too dark, you just very lightly, I usually always have my brush in about 40%. And that just gives you kind of a nice light soft brush. 20, 40, you know, between 20 and 40 percent is a really good brush to, to use on that kind of thing. And so you're just like starting to bring it up a little bit. I'm actually in black right now, so it's not going not gonna to work. But hello. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, Photoshop. <laughs> so that's all right. That's pretty cool. I love like all the multiple screens. So let me let me come back to the thing out here. Robin broke Photoshop. I love it. I totally broke Photoshop. You're just pushing it to its limits. Uh, that's funny. So entertainment to entertain us with something. I have to get your images back up here. They take like two seconds to get back up because I have Photoshop open again. No problem. You're now on the screen, so you have to like put on your clown costume or. Um... <laughs> no problem. There we go. I'm gonna, I'm gonna practice that one. That's. Uh, I understand what you did, and now I'm a kind of a visual learner, and I learn a little bit by doing. And so now, what I need to do is, I need to go try that out a few times. Um, yeah, because I, I mean, need, I need to make the connection between what Photoshop's doing and then the utility of it, right? Like, where where can I apply it? You know? Yeah, yeah, understood. Totally understood. So, love uh, all the colors in this. It's just fantastic. I'm I'm not sure about you know how we got this, the brown in here. That that is kind of muddy, and so I don't I don't know if it's really the friend of your image here. Got it. Yeah. And, and just in here, we're just getting a little bit of crushed blacks. But I know you said you worked on that, right? But yeah. these areas, and which is part of the reason why I wanted to show you how to do that, because you know when you're actually, I mean, now at this stage, what you've saved out, you might not have enough information, but you may have enough information left in your um, in your raw file. Yeah, I'm gonna have to go back and look. Yeah. Um, it's, it's entirely up to you whether you want to play with it some more. One of the things that I love about this image is all of these triangles in here that you caught. You know about some basic composition thingies, right? Uh, the shapes uh, is one of those things that that you know we can put into our. Actually, you have one here that we can put into our our images. Shapes are are excellent to use as composition. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then. One of the things, and I hope I don't crash my Photoshop again here, is um, when you're tone mapping, um, what in, there's like kind of a standard algorithm that goes into um, creating this, this contrast that uh, the program's trying to give you. And I just want to show you a really quick example of what's happening. Mm. Okay, so I'm just going to do really quick because high pass is one of those things where you can actually see what's going on. Now, typically, what people use high pass for, it's really really fun for, is to use it for sharpening because you can see what hap what happens as I as I go through here. You're just getting that little bit of tiny bit of detail, and if it's set to overlay, people use it for such an overlayer stuff like people use it for sharpening all the time. But now when I really drag that slider up and I just go for it, can you see what's happening? Yep. 
you get this light area because it, the, really all it's trying to do is create contrast for you. So right. it's finding all the edges and it's trying to create contrast around all those edges. So it gets very, very dark around. In fact, if I set this to, uh, oh wait, if I set this to, whoops, didn't mean to click cancel. Let me bring that up again. Say okay. And then if I set it to overlay. Hmm. Now you can see what's happening right here. Yeah. Darker, lighter. Darker, lighter. Because it's trying to find those edges for you. Okay? So that's all. In fact, I can close this guy out because you got it. So that's all that's happening. I see. You get this darker. It wants to find that contrast for you, but it's now doing it on a really, really grand scale. Like I just dragged that high pass slider way up. So um, it's just something to be mindful of, to be aware of when you're doing the processing. Now, is this effect I want to have here? Is it really working for me? Or, you know, you have to just decide whether that's, that's something you actually want to have in that particular area. Yeah, I got it. I can see that now. Yeah. I've worked, I, you know, in terms of the HDR, I, I have to say that um, I probably went down the path that most people do, which is experimentation. And what I, what I was able to do with HDR was quickly start to realize the real cool nature of it, which is just to be able to get some of the details in both the highlights and the shadows. And I would say that you know, nine, 99 times out of 100, I'm trying to do the most natural output from these things. And you're right, though, sometimes the algorithm, though, will do things and it just has to make some decisions for you. Mm -hmm. And I think um, the lesson is it's still your image. And so you've got to go in and maybe confine that to a layer and do a little bit more work on the layer. You can. Oftentimes I've done that where I've tone mapped one you know, I've tone mapped a whole image, just but just to be able to select out a, a singular portion of that area and use it in a specific spot. Yeah. And as you go on, you'll just get used to being able to make these decisions yourself. I, I, I mean, I'm not telling you this is it's bad what you've done. I really only want you to. I'm just trying to empower you yes. so that you know what's happening there, and and then you can decide. Okay, is that going to be the best thing for this particular image? Is this what I want to convey? You know what I'm saying? Uh, absolutely, yep, I do. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, so I'm going to go on to the next image. Tell me about your goal for this image. Ah, uh, yeah. So this was um, this one was really kind of a little whimsical, which is, what if this was my house, right? Like, what would it be like walking up in the 1800s? This is on uh, a park in Wisconsin called Old World Wisconsin, and this was a German fa farmer's house. Right. And um, and that's it. And so I just wanted this, like, can't could this be a step back in time, right? Could you could you put yourself there? You know, I wanted the image to take the person there. Um, right. And that's that's really it. You know, just kind of a little bit light, a little bit just a period of time inviting you into this, you know, German farmer's house. <laughs> Very nice. Yeah. Very nice. I love I love the thought uh, the thought behind it. It's wonderful. So tell me about the processing on it. Uh, sure. Yeah, it has a three exposure HDR and I combined them into a 32-bit file. So I did not I didn't run it through photomatics, but I just kind of combined all the data again to try to recover some of the darks. It was actually a horrible time of day. I think it was like 2 p.m. in the middle of the summer. Mm -hmm. uh, so it was just a really harsh time of day. And um, and then I might have, I think, yeah, I used Nick Color Effects 4 to just add a little punch to it. Um, I actually brought it then into Photoshop, and I darkened the path a little bit. Um, I did, I think I, you know, uh, copied or duplicated the layer mm -hmm. and then I used one of the like maybe multiply or darken to just darken and then I painted it painted it in to get a little su subtle darkening because it was a, it was just a little bit too it was like bleached decomposed granite and it was just right. a little too bright and I, right. I wanted to have a little more texture in there so um, that was it and then quite frankly I, I did wind up cropping 
um, based on feedback that I got from my peer review for my level three, um, right. Jacob, Colin, Christina, um, Lahani, and um, and I tried to use the tree. I had a lot more in the image to your earlier point about main and supporting actors. Mm -hmm. the tree was kind of taken over the tree on the left. Right. So we kind of. I got my eyes open to the fact that I don't need to see the whole tree, but it actually is a good element for framing on the left. Um, looking at it now, I can see it's it's a little darker than the rest of the image. Um, I also see some of my effects of the movement. Um, I can see now that I didn't see before. Some of the blurriness or some ghosting going on. Some of the ghosting. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I see that right there. Boom. Yeah. 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 So I don't I don't need to mention that to you at all. No. Yeah, those are actually really kind of sometimes, I mean, if you don't have a ton of it, they're really easy to get out with that little spot healing brush. Yeah. Have you ever used the, the, that in Photoshop? Yes. That's sweet. It's really, really nice. It's a great tool. So, um, lovely. I love your composition. And uh, really, as I said before, I love the, the, the general idea of it, you know, that this is just some place, could we go there? Could, you know, could you live there? You know, it's, a, it's such a great feeling to this. Very uh, calming image, in fact. Um, the choice of composition for this pathway to lead. I don't know if you needed to uh, lighten, I mean darken this up, because you know, values, they attract the eye. High values attract the eye. So you, you kind of actually reduced your lead in, your lead in to your, your main actor here, yeah. you know, in doing that. But um, I don't know if, if I've seen was when did you did you actually with the lightened path did you give that to your peer review? No, actually, I don't think it came up. Okay, so that was that was early, early, early on. So yeah, I'm kind of curious as to what as to what that looks like. So one of the main things, and and I was describing to you before about value drawing our eye, high values, um, in in going so gray in the sky you've yeah. actually lost a little bit of that option to continue to really feature you know this as the the main actor here yeah. right because it's it's very low in saturation you actually have a, a, a highly saturated uh, yellow here yeah. which is off you know it's it's not in uh, at your main actor you have a highly saturated red over here which is not a, at your main actor it has large size going for it. Mm -hmm. So that's very good. This pathway has a large size going for it. That's very good also. So just some, some points to keep in mind. I would very much love for you to do some of those challenges, the weekly challenge that I have laid out, because they're all designed to get you that data. Got it. You know, that little, they're just like art basics stuff, and um, it can be pretty boring if you're just, you know, slavishly poring over books trying to get them all. But if you're going and you're looking at images based on a concept, then it, you just you just see it, and you go, yeah, I want that. You know, when you I, know? I have to say one thing, just listening to you, again, it's one of those things where, you know, it's just in the blind spot. You see, I think, I think part of... One of the things I'm coming to terms with is that, you know, I'm in the field, you get drawn to an image, and you know, I want to make an image out of what I see. Yeah. I want to capture the emotion. And so what happens is, for me, I see it, and I take it. And then what happens is I'm probably try to stay too true to that, mm -hmm. but I can still manipulate things to make it even better because it's not important to me that people see what I saw. I want them to see what I feel, if that makes sense. Absolutely. That is, that is actually, I mean, the bottom line is, is that art, and this is what we're talking about. We're not talking about journalistic photography. Art is only a communication. Mm -hmm. It isn't anything more glorious than a communication. Now, some people communicate better than others. It's like when you learn a new language, you go to a different country, and people 
actually start to pay attention to you because you speak their language. It's a totally different feeling than when you go there and you don't know their language and they look at you like a oh, foreigner, you know, right? Yeah. So really all we're talking about, and that's that's what the art basics are, the color harmonies, the learning about uh, light and shadow and characteristics of those, that's all they are is just learning a language. To yeah, better, I really, I really want to go back to some of those basics because now, Robin, just listening to you, I thought of, wouldn't it be cool if I took the red building, which is a supporting mm -hmm. actor, it mm -hmm. adds to the time, mm -hmm. right, period, but I just changed that to something that was not red, like a brown, <laughs> and then go. make the door on the house red. Yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. I mean, you are getting it exactly. And yeah, I, and I didn't see that before. And the other thing I didn't see was this horrible branch on my roof, and I could have easily taken that out. Like, <laughs> I just didn't see it, like because I think that um, when I'm looking at the image, I'm putting myself back in time to when I took it, and then it happens. You know, you just you don't see the distractions until you have to like really step out of yourself and look back at it as an, a viewer and not the maker. You yeah. Know? Yeah, this, I don't think I practice really... that enough. I don't practice that enough before I publish stuff. I have to put myself in the shoes of the viewer, not the maker. Um, yeah, it's well, a... yeah I, I totally get where you're coming from, totally. Um, that's what the thing of the, the challenge that I created for uh, finding out your main actor and the supporting actors and anything that is non-supporting. And you go and you just, you just reference other people's images yeah. and you just look at them and you say what's who's what is the main actor here mm -hmm. and are there supporting actors that genuinely should be in the scene to to, to tell that story mm -hmm. and is there anything here that's taking me out of the story Got it. That's, yeah. a, that's the bottom line if you're watching a movie and all of a sudden a banana goes flying through the scene <laughs> you're out of the story you're gone Okay, and but we we tend to leave bananas all over the place. Of course, not not literal bananas, but you get the idea. All my all my mentees joke. They joke with me about that. They actually sent me a book with a banana on the. Uh, one of my mentees was lying on the ground with a banana. <laughs> it was very funny. But th that's the bottom line. You you know you take something that's in an image. Now I don't really see a lot. I mean, everything here is connecting. It's not like you have like an airplane flying through the scene, or you know, some you know odd flag or balloon or whatever that doesn't belong. It all fits. So now we're all we're talking about is, is understanding some of those art basics, which are you know saturation draws the eye, especially yellows and reds draw the eye. High value draws the eye. So when you take it away, you know, you've actually reduced it on your main actor here. But I loved your idea with the red door, and I love the fact that you're already thinking, you're already creating. You know, your your mind is already clicking. Yeah, I just but it took it it took kind of this experience to kind of look back. I mean, and even the peer review actually, I made a bunch of changes, and now just looking at it again, I can see more improvements to make it kind of, quite frankly, the best that I could make out of this image, you know, and so... Yeah. Well, you, you saw a nice little frame here, you know, that just sort of kind of featured it, and it, it makes it much homier. Yeah. You know? it's, it's very nice. So there's, it, it's not, you know, a, a boring image in, in any regard, and I think with your ideas and, and the things that you want to do with it, you actually really can make something special out of it and make people feel what you want them to feel when, when they see it, you know? Yeah, excellent. Well, thank you. That's good. <laughs> yeah. So let's move on to the next one. Oh, tell me about this guy. Yeah, this is New Zealand. Um, and th again, simple goal, capture the majesty. But there was also some symmetry that I wanted to get. Um, I love the V shape with the, and, and the layers from top to bottom, sky, mm -hmm. mountains, water, trees, shrubs. Um, lots of triangles, um, you know, almost if you looked at it black and white, it would just be these, like, layers of triangles. Yeah. Um, and that's one of the reasons I chose to do the portrait um, composition or aspect ratio to try to accentuate those, those elements, you know, mm -hmm. layers from top to bottom and then, which is really actually um, from back to front, you know. Yeah. So yeah. It. It's fantastic. Absolutely, absolutely love it. It's a wonderful image. It, it, the composition of it is is what I love the most about it. You have this um, kind of half circle here, this little bit of an arc mm -hmm. that um, puts the viewer 
back from, you know, actually being in the scene. And now he's looking at the scene. And it's, it's this overwhelming thing, uh, you know, beyond this, this little arc. It's a great feature to kind of almost frame your, your uh, main element here. Would you, would you describe this as, as your main actor, this whole area here? I, I think so. Now and that we've talked about that a little bit. I'm... Yeah, I think so. And I, I think I tried to frame it with these two mountains side by side to kind of support it, you know, almost prop it up. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I will tell you, I this is one of those times where I saw before I shot, and I specifically moved to a location to get that semicircle. Fantastic, fantastic, really, really well done. Very rare, and I don't repeat that often. <laughs> I do remember specifically doing that. Yeah, I think you'll you you will start to see it more and more and more. The more you do it, you know. Yeah. The more you'll really, really start to see these elements because you absolutely nailed it with this. It just totally, totally uh, grabs you. Um, I'm curious about the grayness that's happening in the clouds. I'd yeah. love to see this this white be um, fairly true in this area, or at least gradiently come up. I, I, I have to say, um, I think I'm colorblind when it comes to gray, and I say that kind of half joking, but. I get that often. Um, people say, "Oh, you know, there's a little gray here." And I'm like, "I don't see it. Where's the gray in the sky?" And then, and then I have to like take a minute and look at it, and then I realize, "Yeah, you know, it's just there's gray in that color, or mm-hmm. it's not really white." And this is one of the most elusive things for me is getting purity of color. Um, and you've hit on it a few times now, and. I got to tell you, it's not something I practice trying to get right, and I, I kind of get called out for it a lot. And so now I have to figure out a check. I have to do a check and balance for myself to kind of. This is your tool. Okay. <laughs> that's that's the info window. Yep. And you just basically, um, you see the numbers change as I I move my cursor. Yes. Okay. So, you see that. Yes. You see that? If you want to get them to agree a little bit more, then you start using your adjustment layers to kind of, you know, pull up the areas. Of course, that's going to take a little masking and, and, and whatnot. Mm-hmm. But if you're ever uncertain, that this is this is your tool, the info palette. Got it. Okay. And that will tell me, will that really show me my gray tones or? It will show, it'll give you the numbers. And if the numbers don't agree, yeah, it actually does, it uh, I have to bring it up again because I still Sorry. No, 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 wait. I have it here. Sorry about that. I do have it here. So, see the CMYK here? Okay. And you have um, options for what mode. So, you can have it in hue saturation and black values, and you can have it for RGB. You can have it for grayscale. You have all your options in here. Got it. And then, basically, as I as I mouse over an area, you can see in the CMYK area, you can see in the RGB, there's actually number values for those things. Right. So if we go to the white here, and then where we would also expect to see white, which would be right up above, you yeah. see those numbers drop? Yeah, yeah. Okay? And then the... Um, uh, if we If we say move it over to, like, one of these greens... You can see each each of those are assigned with a number, yep. and so it's a great way for people who really you know can't see color like you know immediately, um, but want to make connections in their imagery when they're processing. They want to make you know a greater connection. Like oh, you have a great connection in the color of your of your water and your sky. You know it's not a purple sky and cyan water. Right. You know, and so I know that some people they just don't they don't see those. You know it's blue blue. <laughs> right, right. Right? So, so, um, but you, you, you have a, like a good feel for color already. But I think you know, just for those very, very, very fine details, you just use that info palette. Got it. Okay, that's great. I didn't, I have not used that tool. That's a great tip. Yeah, it's a wonderful little tool. Anyway, I not much more to say about this one. Other, you know, other than what I just showed you with that high pass thingy. Yes. It's kind of you know just giving a little bit of that um, dark over the edges of of the. But you know what? I don't really care about that. I think it looks gorgeous. Oh, this is great. This is just a great image. It's so well seen. Very well done. Thank you.
and on to the next. Okay. All right, tell me about this one. Okay, so <laughs> I did quite a bit on this. This I got a lot of feedback from my peer review. And um, first, this is in Sawyer, Michigan, at one of my best friend's house. And um, it was you know in the evening. You can see the sun setting. And I was out just trying to take a few photos. Um, and I went across the street. And when I turned around, I saw the sun coming through the tree. I thought, mm -hmm. oh, man, I got to get that. Mm -hmm. and there were just I mean, so these are all apples on the floor. This is an apple tree. And, I mean, they were so ripe. They were dropping as I was taking photos. Oh, how fun. And we actually wound up using apples from us and made apple pie that night. I mean, so that's a little bit of the story there, right? Right. And um, I, did, I did a lot of work on this, mostly because on the right-hand side, there was a shed, a tractor, two orange cones for soccer, a soccer ball, a car, a goal. Um, <laughs> there were quite a bit of things um, there. And um, so I took those out. And then I did a couple of things here, which was um, I got on this kick. Sometimes my images are reflections of the current thing I'm learning. Mm -hmm. And one of the things I kind of got on a kick about was complementary colors. Oh, yes. And, and so I had this warm summer scene and I thought you know this could be interesting let me sample green and find the complementary color to it and try to balance the image out a little bit right so I have this metrical image and um, and so I try to do that and I used Adobe has that tool called color k-u-l-e-r right uh -huh. and uh, and so I used that and I, I actually tried to feather in some of the purple, light purple, mauve kind of colors wow. to get that, like, you know, sun, late evening or late afternoon sun that starts to give you those reds, you know, tones. Okay. Now, <laughs> the group, my peers, um, they helped me see a bunch of stuff that I corrected. And the way I corrected it, and I can see there's an artifact in there that I didn't see before on the left <laughs> But I got to tell you, I didn't see that. But what I did was I actually mirrored the image left to right. I, 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 I duplicated the layer. Mm -hmm. and I mirrored it. So I flipped it horizontally. Right. And then I, yeah, and I, because, and I took one of the tree trunks out to make it a little more symmetrical. Right. Is that what you're talking about? The little, these little guys got Yeah, left? and I don't know why they're showing through that. Honestly, I think it was just, it's one of those things where you're working on it, it you think it looks right, but you're not, doing, I think Rick Salmon calls it border control. I've heard other people say it too, but going around the borders, just making sure everything's in there. Yeah. And I just, I miss those guys. There's a little artifact there. But that, that, I don't know, that, that is kind of what I did. I used, I think it was, it was definitely an HDR shot because of the backlighting. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to get a star, so I used a small aperture to start to get the star effect of the sun. Yeah. Um, yeah, but I had a lot of work to do to get all those other things out of the image. Um, yeah. Yeah, so. Well, fantastic work, really. You, you did you did a great job. I actually saw the image. Uh, I believe I remember this one, and when it still had the trees here, and it was still great. It, it didn't actually need, I think that was basically a, a uh, artistic decision on your part, completely fine to do. It is not obvious. You know, if a person really looks, they can start to see the replication. Yeah. You no, know, but otherwise, I think it was a really fun idea. Uh, I love that the fact that the tree didn't get symmetrical. I mean, didn't didn't become flipped, you know, and and have an like mirror image, right. but it's still symmetrical. So it was a very well seen composition, and I absolutely adore this decision to add these little pinks, you know, this sort of magenta in here in terms of uh, the color harmony aspect of it. Yeah. It's wonderful. Just wonderful. I love this image. I, I, I think it's very well seen. This just, you know, it's an immediately eye catcher with all these apples falling here and this bright sunlight through this through the tree. Did you did you tone down the values a little bit? I don't know if you can see my cursor that well. Yeah. Can you I, tone it down? I, I, I tried to, yeah. Yeah. No reason to. And the reason why I say this, and a lot of I've seen a lot of people do it, is is that a gray spot of light is actually more of a distraction mm. you know because this this was your 
folk this was what was driving the viewer into the image so it was and no one expects that anybody's going to be be able to take a picture of his son without a bazillion filters over the top mm -hmm, mm -hmm. you know so I've seen enough uh, images now where people have just left the sun just bright and shining as it was, as long as it's not overtaking the entire image, right. you know, and just completely, utterly blown out. But you didn't. You have all of these just lovely rays in here, and so a big white spot right right here is not gonna is not gonna de detract. But having it brought down so much now, it is actually kind of kind of an eye catcher, and and but in not a not a good way. I so, see. Yeah, you can actually go back up with that. And every every other decision that you've made here, I just love. I think this is a fabulous image. This one, this one definitely holds. This is one of the few. I don't print a lot, but I did print this one. Yeah. And I think part of part of it was for me. This is one of the first images where I felt like I was painting. You know, I had gotten this oh. uh, Wacom tablet and yeah. um, putting the pinks in. And, yeah, you know, just the some of the replication and cloning, and it, it felt like I was creating uh, a painting, and and that I don't know, there's just something else about that experience that went beyond the taking of the photograph and moved it to making an image. You know, I don't absolutely. Know. Yeah, I was just gonna say it's a true artistic work because I really feel you in it. I feel you putting your vision into the work and making it exceptional. I mean it was a very it's a very nice composition to begin with, but the the choice to add these reds here in the grass, you know, this is just it just supports the whole thing very, very well. It was just hard. a great composition and, and, and a great piece of art. Oh thank you. Yeah, it's hard to do that be, because I I didn't have a good sense of whether it was overtaking or not. I wanted it to be natural and that that was a hard thing to kind of come to terms with. I mean I did this image I probably worked on this image ten or twelve separate times. Um, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it shows. I mean, it shows in 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 the its beauty. You know how much you you put into the work. Thanks. Yeah, very well done. And I think that was our last. Yeah, we've gone through them. I just want to make sure from our, my the the crash that yeah. All right. Well, very well done. I'm going to come out of the screen share here. Oh my gosh, I'm super motivated. Like I already know what I want to go do with a couple of these things. <laughs> right, right. Oh, that's great. That's just what I want. And we're out. Hi there. Hello, hello. Yay, so motivated. That's those are the words that I exactly want to use. <laughs> I totally want to go in there now. Well, also, like I have this thing, you know, like 24 hour rule, 72 hour rule. You learn something practice it in the next day or two days in order to make it yours, you know, yes. and so now I've taken some notes on these things, I want to go and just, and I think the easiest way for me is to start with what I know, which is these images, you know, and I can go and apply what I've learned here, and, and you know, I'm going to make some new works, but I think it's a great way to go back and reflect on what I learned, put it into the image that we were talking about, because right. now I see it, I see it in my head, like I know what my destination is for the image. Yeah. And and I want to get there, you know. Yeah. Oh, um, wonderful. <laughs> cool. I love to hear that. That's fantastic. Very exciting. All right, Peter, I will be seeing you back in the cohort. Okay, well thanks Robin. This is really good. Thanks. <laughs> good. Bye bye. Awesome. Bye.